Bible, Micah. Okay, we're picking up on the, the 12 uh, prophets, the minor prophets with the book of Micah. And Micah was a contemporary of Isaiah in Judah and Hosea in Israel. And uh, he was, so he, he prophesied in the south. And so this was somehow, somewhere in the 700 BCs. Um, and while prophesying mostly to Judah, he also prophesied the fall of, of Jerusalem, which is in Judah, and Samaria, the capital of Israel. So he prophesied the fall of both of those. Uh, and, and so we're just going to, I'm going to jump through some of this. In verse 1 of 1, it says, The word of the Lord which came to Micah of Moresheth in the days of Jotham, Ahaz, and Hezekiah, kings of Judah, which he saw concerning Samaria and Jerusalem. Once again, gives us the time frame of when, during those kings, and Hezekiah, uh, it was a pretty good time at the end of his reign. And, you know, he, well, during his reign, it was a pretty good time. And, uh, but he saw, even during that good time, that, there would be, that Samaria would fall and Jerusalem would fall. And he saw it. That's the way he got his uh, prophecy was apparently in, in some type of vision. Well, I'm going to skip through most of chapter 1 and, and go to uh, chapter 2, verse 1. It says, Woe to those who scheme iniquity, who work out evil on their beds. When morning comes, they do it, for it is in the power of their hands. Uh, they covet fields and then seize them and houses and take them away. They rob a man of his house, a man of, and his inheritance. Here, one of the things that God is condemning here is actually that evil rulers or evil people taking the property of others. You know, God actually here he's de de defending the uh, personal property ownership. It's interesting to me that if you look in America's history that the sign, the main sign that the Founding Fathers said was of freedom was if somebody could own property. I heard a recent thing that said in, by, in some of these groups that are wanting to do the great reset of the world, they said, well, by 2030, no one will own anything and they'll be happy not to own anything. And that's just the opposite of freedom as we see it both in the scriptures and in the understanding of, of the beginning of uh, the nation of the United States of America. So here we're going to jump over to chapter 3 in Micah and verse uh, 7. Uh, it's talking about, of course, the judgment time that comes. Uh, Samaria and, and Jerusalem are going to fall. But here it says, The seers will be ashamed and the diviners will be embarrassed. Indeed, they will all cover their mouths because there is no answer from God. So a time when God is just kind of shut up because he's already given his declaration and he's not saying anymore. And on the other hand, I am filled with power, with the Spirit of the Lord, and with justice and courage to make known to Jacob his rebellious act and to Israel his sin. So he's prophesying what we said, both the southern and the northern kingdom here. Now hear this, heads of the house of Jacob and rulers of the house of Israel, who abhor justice and twist everything that is straight. So once, once again, that's kind of a sign when, when justice is, is twisted. And a lot of times it's toward the poor. The poor are getting the bad deal here. They're getting uh, abused by those that are in authority. And it says, verse 10, who build Zion with bloodshed and Jerusalem with violent injustice. Her leaders pronounce judgment for a bribe, her priests instruct for a price, and her prophets divine for money. Yet they lean on the Lord, saying, is not the Lord in our midst? Calamity will not come upon us. So here he's saying, these people are, are taking bribes. Uh, they, they don't do anything unless they get money for it somehow. And, yet, and then they still make a claim that, is not the Lord in our midst? You know, we see this... Uh, Unfortunately, among politicians even of our day, I just saw today that, and this wasn't a politician, it was a talk, talk show host, but some of the politicians, I think, are, are leaning the same way, just saying, well, God endorses abortion. He approves abortion. You know, God's in our midst. God's for us. He's for what we're for. And a lot of times we think because God's not moved in judgment actively against something in our recent past that he's just like us. And a lot of times we get it confused that God got... My emotions, my thoughts, my whatever are the same as God's. And that's why we need to go to the Word of God. We need to go here and get a, a, a standard that we can look at, that we can measure ourselves by, that we don't deceive ourselves into thinking whatever I think is right is right. That's, you know, let, me say, let's, let me say this. That's a real common uh, temptation for someone who speaks in a pulpit on a regular basis. You get up there and you think you're saying something, you feel the sense of authority and the sense of whatever... And you can begin to think that whatever you say is right. And uh, it's been a deception that's happened to many over the years, and it happens to these leaders that we see all through the, even the Old Testament. So um, we're looking at chapter 4 here, and this is an interesting chapter in that it begins, and it's the exact same prophecy of Isaiah 2. 
chapter 4 of uh, Micah and Isaiah 2 are the same, and they start out the same way, the first few verses are the same. And it will come about in the last days that the mountain of the house of the Lord will be established as a chief of the mountains. It will be raised above the hills and the peoples will stream to it. So there's this, this prophecy once again about the end times when, when Zion will be established, when Jerusalem will be established as a place where everyone will come. It will be a place where uh, Judah will be exalted, the Lord himself will give instruction there, he'll be teaching there. It, it's, it talks about what generally we would call a millennial reign or the reign of, the, of, of Christ on the earth as king, when God uh, is, is taking control of the earth and, and uh, some would equate it to the thousand years that later Jesus would reign. Well, during that time, it looks like Jerusalem's going to be exalted, uh, Israel will be exalted, and people actually come there to hear teaching. It says, from the Lord himself. So in verse 6 of chapter 4, it says, In that day, declares the Lord, I will assemble the lame and gather the outcasts, even those whom I have afflicted. I will make the lame a remnant and the outcasts a strong nation. And the Lord will reign over them in Mount Zion from now on and forever. So here's the declaration that uh, the Lord is going to gather even like outcasts and he's going to make them his nation. So he, he doesn't have to have just the finest of everything. He takes uh, people and redeems them like, like us, you know, and redeems us maybe not from our physical infirmity, although some, some have, but uh, redeems us from our sinful ways and, and uh, uses us and makes us a nation. And then there's a really interesting verse here. This one's really intriguing. I'm going to spend a little time, I think, here. In verse 8 of chapter 4, it says, As for you, tower of the flock, it says, I'm reading the New American Standard. In the footnotes, it says Migdal Eder. And that's the name of this tower. That's the, the, the Hebrew name, and it's translated, tower of the flock. Hill of the daughter of Zion, to you will, it will come. Even the former dominion will come, the kingdom of the daughter of Jerusalem. That's, that's a pretty tough uh, thing to work through, a prophecy to work through there. But what's interesting about this place, Migdal Eder, it's mentioned uh, earlier in the Bible in Genesis chapter 35, and I think we might have mentioned it when we were back in Genesis a long time ago. Uh, it's where um, Rachel was giving birth to her son Benjamin, and uh, in giving birth to Benjamin, she died. And before she died, she gave him a name and named him uh, Ben O. Uh, ben Oni, B E N O N I. And it says, and that she named him that because that means the son of my sorrow. But uh, dad came along, and after she died, the father called him Benjamin, which is son of my right hand. And what's interesting is so at this place, Migdal Ader, which is just beyond, just beyond, well, it says here, so Rachel died and was buried on the way to Ephrath, that is Bethlehem. And Jacob set up a pillar over her grave, that is a pillar of Rachel's grave to this day. Then Israel journeyed on and pitched his tent beyond the tower of Ader, beyond Migdal Ader. So they're right in that area. Rachel dies. Benjamin is born, but he's called Benoni. And then he's called Benjamin, son of my sorrow, son of my right hand. Well, this place, Migdal Ader, came, the tower of the flock became a place where they raised the little lambs that were going to be used for sacrifice in the Jerusalem temple. And so what happens here is, is in fact, we see when, when Jesus was, was born, it said, uh, you'll find, this will be a sign to you, you'll find a babe wrapped in swaddling cloths, swaddling clothes and laying in a manger, lying in a manger. And, you know, what happened in Migdal Ader is what they did is that they, since they were raising these lambs to be used as sacrifice, the lambs couldn't have any defect in them. So what they'd do when they were born is they'd wrap them in these swaddling clothes so they couldn't you know, jerk around and injure themselves. And it's interesting to me, it, it, to me, I think this may have been prophesying the actual place where Jesus would be born. We see just ahead in Micah 5, 2, we're going to look at that. It says the place, you know, it talks about the place he's born, Bethlehem, Ephrathah. Well, that's where this Migdal Eder is at. And Migdal Eder is the place where these lambs were born that were used for sacrifice. And these lambs were wrapped in swaddling clothes. So, because I used to think, you know, in the New Testament it says, this, the, the angel says, this will be a sign to you. You'll find a babe wrapped in swaddling clothes and lying in a manger. It said, and, and, the, and the shepherds just took off. They knew where to go. You know, I'm thinking, these shepherds probably were the shepherds that watched over the flock that were a part of Migdal Eder, that were being raised for the Jerusalem temple. And when they heard this from the angel, they knew right where to go, and so they took off. So we'll pick up from there in our next session.